Hello ladies and gentlemen and uh, welcome to uh, what will probably be my last review of uh, the Olympus uh, OM series uh, 35mm SLR cameras and I couldn't possibly leave without doing uh, a review of uh, probably the most famous of all the Olympus OM uh, 35mm SLR cameras the Olympus OM-1, which was uh, really the 35mm uh, SLR camera that started it all uh, way back in uh, 1972 when the original Olympus OM-1 was launched. Um, originally the camera was launched as, of all things, the o the M1 and not the OM1 but uh, uh, Leica uh, took umbrage to that because they had uh, a camera called the Leica M1 and Olympus swiftly had to change the name of the camera from the M1 uh, to the OM1 uh, to prevent uh, a certain <laughs> Uh, legal action being taken by uh, Leica who had uh, claimed the M1 name first. So originally the camera was called the M1. If you happen to have one or find one out there hold on to it because it will be a collector's piece. I think they only managed to make about uh, 50,000 of the M1s before they had to withdraw them and rename them to the OM1. So uh, uh, if you've got one, uh, hold on to it. They'll, they'll be worth a few bob. But uh, the original Olympus OM-1 uh, launched in 1972. 35mm single lens reflex uh, camera. Completely manual. Uh, this camera uh, was uh, absolutely manual in every aspect of its operation. Uh, it only had one exposure mode, and that was uh, a manual exposure mode. It didn't have any fancy auto exposure modes like aperture priority or uh, shutter priority or program modes, nothing like that. This was a very basic, simple, straightforward camera using a mechanical shutter, which didn't depend on uh, electronics and uh, uh, was, uh, wasn't was reliant on batteries uh, like some of the later OM cameras were such as the uh, later uh, OM2 and the OM2N and virtually every camera that came after the OM1 uh, was uh, dependent on batteries for its operation if uh, the batteries died your camera died basically. Uh, some of them had a, a single mechanical shutter speed like the OM4 Ti had a, and the OM4 had a single a 1 60th of a second uh, mechanical speed uh, to sort of try and rescue you from disaster if your batteries failed. But uh, on the OM1 it didn't matter if uh, your battery failed because the shutter was com completely manual and therefore you had a full range of shutter speeds from uh, one second right up to its maximum uh, one one thousandth of a second. So uh, uh, manual exposure only. Uh, it did. The camera did have a meter in it. Um, it was uh, a CDS meter. Uh, was center weighted uh, metering. Uh, it featured a simple on off switch on the top of the uh, camera top plate. Uh, you switched it on and what you got in the viewfinder was uh, was a needle and uh, the needle had a, a plus and minus markings uh, plus minus to the top, the minus marking to the bottom uh, indicating either overexposure or underexposure. So uh, you switched on your meter, you then had to select uh, a, a shutter speed, which you did 
by uh, uh, selecting the speed uh, around the uh, lens throat on the Olympus OM. Rather unique there that it had uh, the shutter speed control dial around the lens throat. Um, and you had to select then the aperture on the lens. The, the Zyco lenses were unique as well in that they had the aperture control on the front of the lens whereas uh, most uh, cameras of that era had the aperture towards the back of the lens. The Zyco lenses always had the aperture right at the front of the lens. So when you had picked uh, an aperture setting and a shutter speed setting uh, that uh, uh, got the needle in the viewfinder into the center, in other words it was uh, right between the plus and the minus uh, markings in the viewfinder, then you know you, that your exposure was uh, set correctly. Uh, uh, that was how you metered with the OM-1. Uh, it just had a simple, as they call, uh, a needle metering uh, exposure system. Uh, very simple, uh, centre-weighted metering, no fancy spot metering or evaluative metering like they have in uh, modern cameras nowadays. It just had uh, simple centre-weighted metering and uh, manual uh, control of the exposure. So uh, a very simple uh, basic camera with a mechanically controlled shutter. Uh, very reliable. Uh, as I say, you weren't dependent on batteries with this camera. They say the batteries only powered uh, the light meter but even if you turn the light meter off the, the shutter and the aperture still worked perfectly uh, as you see you would, uh, have it turned off at the minute if you wind the camera on uh, it would still uh, fire away uh, no problem at all as a mechanical shutter on the OM-1 um, on the top plate of the camera, as we see, uh, the control layout was very simple. Uh, to the left, you had your uh, metering uh, switch, and it was simply on or off. If you turned it on, that activated the meter in the viewfinder, a simple uh, plus or minus uh, uh, needle. And uh, in order to get this exposure correct, you had to have that needle between, exactly between the plus and minus uh, signs in the viewfinder. And that indicated that you had uh, your exposure set correctly, having uh, balanced your uh, shutter speed and your aperture to uh, the correct values. Uh, so a very simple, straightforward uh, meter in the camera. Um, to calibrate the meter you had on the top plate, you had your ISO settings. Um, depending on what film you decided to use in the camera, you first had to uh, calibrate the meter uh, by uh, setting the ISO setting on this wheel. And as we can see, uh, the ISO settings ran from uh, 25 ISO uh, right up to uh, 1600 ISO, so you had quite a, quite a broad uh, uh, choice when it came to using film. Anything from uh, 25 ISO right up to 1600 ISO film you could use in this camera because the meter was uh, able to be calibrated for that. Uh, in order to uh, change the setting, the ISO setting on the wheel, as we can see on the top plate, there is a little button here and uh, you had to depress that because the wheel was uh, locked in position and uh, couldn't be moved until you press that little button down. Uh, once you press that little button down, you could then uh, move the ISO wheel uh, and align it. For instance, uh, because I have a 100 ISO, it's aligned with a little notch on the uh, shutter uh, shutter speed uh, button there you'll see it it's uh, it's quite hard to see but there is actually a little mark there on the shutter speed uh, uh, button uh, a little mark and if you aligned the uh, ISO number up against that mark 
then uh, your uh, meter was calibrated uh, to operate at that ISO speed. So as I say, you had to press down that little button there to uh, release the uh, the ISO uh, wheel, and then you could uh, set your uh, your ISO for whatever the speed of film you were using in the camera at the time. Uh, so there I have it set for uh, 200 ISO at the minute. You can see the 200 is aligned with that little mark on the uh, shutter release button. So uh, I say that's how you, uh, you set your film speed on the camera. Um, perfectly uh, uh, normal controls other than that, as I say, your wind on, beautifully smooth wind on on the OM-1 and uh, it's later derivative of the OM-1N. Uh, it had a lovely smooth wind on action and uh, an equally smooth shutter release. Um, with a lovely shutter sound. The OM-1 camera had uh, a beautiful uh, shutter on it and a beautiful wind-on mechanism. The camera itself, was uh, the, the proportions of the camera were quite uh, compact compared to other cameras of the era. era. Uh, it was actually quite small and slim and uh, fitted in the hand beautifully. Um, Again, the controls, uh, as far as uh, film rewind were concerned, were quite conventional. On the front plate of the camera, you have uh, the little uh, rewind, film rewind uh, button there. If you move that counterclockwise, uh, you uh, disengage the, uh, the film advance, and you were then able to rewind the film by uh, flicking up the uh, rewind lever on the rewind spool and you could rewind your film back into the cassette once you had uh, film, finished your uh, film. So it was straightforward enough there as far as film rewind went. Again on the front of the camera we see here we have a conventional uh, clockwork self timer. If you move that uh, round to there that uh, activated the clockwork uh, self timer. Uh, there's a little uh, button above there, a little uh, white index mark on it. If you just moved that, that activated the clockwork self timer. So uh, the self timer uh, was counting down there. Again, a clockwork mechanism uh, operating that. No electronics involved in uh, the self timer. So. Uh, Another feature of the OM-1 was the self-timer. Uh, to the left of the prism we see uh, this little button again which was common to the OM-1 and the OM-2. The uh, FP uh, flash socket which is again marked with an X and an FP and uh, there's a little uh, uh, red, uh, it's very hard to see but there is actually a little red dot there and you could move that between X and FP dependent on uh, whether you were using electronic flash or the old uh, bulb type flash. Uh, generally speaking you left it uh, sitting on the X setting because that was electronic flash. Uh, old bulb type flashes were well out of date uh, by then so uh, very little used, but uh, in order to use electronic flash via the PC socket, uh, it's worth noting that you had to have that little red dot lined up with the blue X uh, just to make sure you had uh, the proper synchronization for electronic flash. I say the OM1 was uh, quite unique in that uh, instead of having the uh, shutter. Uh, speed control on the top plate which uh, which most uh, cameras had the shutter uh, speed control was round the lens throat and uh, you chose the shutter speed by uh, aligning the shutter speed up against the red dot on uh, the lens uh, for instance at the minute it's set to 1 15th of a second if you move it round 1 30th 1 60th uh, 1 1 25th etc. Uh, the maximum sync speed, uh, flash sync speed on the OM-1 again was 1 60th of a second 
uh, which is why the uh, there's a different coloration on the uh, shutter speed uh, dial. Uh, it's marked in blue up to 1 60th and, and thereafter it's a different colour uh, because uh, that was to remind you that the maximum sync speed for flash on the OM-1 was 1 60th of a second. The camera used a uh, horizontally run uh, cloth shutter uh, as I say, it ran from one second to uh, one one thousandth of second plus the B setting. Uh, and just to demonstrate the shutter to you, if I open the camera back, uh, which again was conventional, you just lifted up the shutter rewind uh, knob there and give it a little pull, and that opened up the camera back. If you wind on the shutter, you'll see the shutter tra travelling across horizontally. It has a horizontally run cloth shutter uh, running from, uh, as I say, one second to one one thousandth of a second plus B. Um, I think I have it set on uh, the B setting there at the minute. So if uh, I hold down the shutter, you'll see that it uh, flicks open and, uh, uh, as I say, that's it on uh, the B setting. But it runs uh, horizontally and it is a cloth shutter on the OM-1 camera. So that's that. Uh, the back actually was uh, detachable on the OM-1 as it was in, in all the uh, OM uh, single digit series cameras. You could remove the back. There's a, there's a little pin there uh, which you just push down. I'm not going to release it but you could release the back. And the point being uh, with that was that you could remove the back and either fix on uh, an accessory back like a data back for printing the date and the time on the camera or there was an accessory called the uh, 250 film back on the OM-1 which uh, carried, uh, which uh, was able to uh, uh, load uh, up to 250 exposures of uh, home loaded film um, you had to use it in conjunction with uh, the uh, winder on uh, the camera, but to uh, say it was capable back in the day of uh, uh, two great big uh, spools on either side of the camera and uh, uh, was able to uh, uh, hold up to 250 exposures, which was uh, probably a benefit to professional photographers, but not really of much use to amateurs. Who probably wouldn't have bought that accessory. Another uh, interesting thing on the OM-1 was a button on the right hand side as we can see here. The camera had a mirror lock up option so if you activated that switch what it did was it locked up the mirror uh, which uh, you could do to reduce uh, vibration etc on long time exposures. Uh, if you flick that up out of the way, of course you couldn't see what was uh, in the viewfinder because uh, the mirror was locked up. But uh, if you were doing something like uh, that required uh, a long exposure and you didn't want to, the mirror to cause vibration, that was a useful feature. Uh, say the mirror could be locked up out of the way uh, just by activating that switch on the front. It had mirror lock up. So an interesting feature there on the OM-1. As I say, uh, the, it used the complete range of uh, Zyco lenses. Uh, this particular lens on the camera is a 50mm f1.8, which was sort of the standard lens that came with the camera. Again, to release the lens, uh, the, the lens had a button there, which you depressed. And then just uh, turned the lens uh, counterclockwise and uh, off it came. It was a bayonet fitting uh, type lens. To reattach the lens, uh, as you see on here, there's a red dot on the lens mount. And you align that up with the, the red dot on the lens throat. Put them together, turned the lens clockwise this time and it uh, clicked back into its locked position on the camera. So uh, the OM-1, as I say, it also 
on the front you will see a little badge which says MD on it. Um, that stood for uh, motor drive. Uh, the very early OM1s actually didn't uh, come as standard with motor drive capability. The bottom plate on them didn't have a, a capability for attaching a motor drive or a winder to them. And it was only the slightly later editions of the Olympus OM1 which uh, featured this MD badge on the front of them. And that uh, meant that the camera was capable of coupling with a motor drive or a winder. Now as you can see on uh, the bottom plate on this camera, it is uh, an MD version. Because here is a cover plate which is removed when you want to use uh, a winder. There's actually a little... Uh, cogged gear in there which engaged with the winder on the camera and to uh, the left of that there you can see the cover for the batteries uh, I'm not going to get into the batteries at the minute that's uh, nearly a subject on its own on the OM1 but I will talk about that later uh, over here in the center you can see uh, a standard uh, tripod socket and over here we have the contacts, the electrical contacts for the motor driver, the winder, uh, which you could be using on this camera. It was capable of using that. On the top, as I say, it has a, a hot shoe. And as with all the uh, single digit uh, Olympus OM cameras, the hot shoe uh, was removable um, on the OM1 and the OM2. Uh, the later series cameras like the OM2 Spot Program, the OM3, the OM4, the OM4Ti, they didn't. Uh, they did away with the removable hot shoe on the camera, and instead they had a fixed hot shoe. But on the OM1, the OM2, the OM1N, and the OM2N, the hot shoe was removable via that little uh, cogged wheel on there. Uh, if you had an OM1 camera. The hot shoe that you needed to use was the Hot Shoe 1. Uh, it was a very simple hot shoe. It just had a single uh, contact in the middle uh, because uh, the OM1 wasn't capable of uh, uh, through the lens flash. It didn't have any uh, fancy flash modes on it and uh, consequently you just used uh, a, a simple hot shoe in it. Um, you had to synchronize the flash with uh, the camera's shutter speed uh, in order to uh, use it. Uh, the later OM1N uh, version of the camera, which we can see here, it uh, actually used the uh, uh, Shoe 4, uh, which had uh, uh, more contacts on the top of it and allowed for uh, 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 checking the flash ready in the uh, viewfinder on the camera. Um, yeah, the uh, Shoe 4 was common to the uh, OM1N and the OM2N, and even though the OM1N didn't have any uh, fancy flash, any, any fancy through the lens flash capability. It did use the same shoe, the same hot shoe as the OM2N. It used the shoe 4. Uh, the only thing that you really got with the OM1N was a flash uh, confirmation light in the viewfinder and a flash uh, ready uh, light. So uh, uh, even though the shoe 4 uh, was really for use on the, more use on the OM2N, which had uh, uh, through the lens flash, uh, the Shoe 4 also fitted the OM1N camera. It did not fit the OM1, uh, by the way. So uh, the OM1 was only capable of utilizing the Shoe 1. So uh, if you're ever in any doubt about that, uh, don't try fitting. Uh, a shoe 4 to an OM1 and don't try fitting a shoe 1 to an OM1N it won't work they each use their own uh, dedicated hot shoes and you've got to use the right hot shoe in the right camera so the OM1N uses a shoe 4 
whereas the OM1 uses a shoe one. So uh, worth noting that. Uh, again, the cameras uh, were uh, beautifully simple. Um, the OM1 just used uh, a single cell uh, mercury battery, a 1.35 volt uh, mercury battery. I said I would touch on the subject of batteries for these cameras because it's quite a, quite an interesting subject if you were thinking of uh, purchasing uh, an OM1 or an OM1N. Um, the OM1 battery was a 1.35 volt mercury cell uh, and that uh, operated the light meter in the camera. Unfortunately, uh, nowadays, or fortunately, depending on your viewpoint on the environment, uh, mercury is no longer uh, regarded as being uh, environmentally friendly. And so you can't actually get uh, mercury cells anymore to power the light meter on this camera. So, uh, although that doesn't affect the performance of the camera in any way because it has a, the mechanical shutter, the camera still performs perfectly as a camera, uh, the problem is that you won't be able to get a battery for the light meter. Um, one solution that I found was that uh, in uh, this camera here you will see whenever I uh, open up the the base on it, you'll see it, it contains the old uh, 1.35 uh, mercury cell uh, battery. It used that one uh, single cell battery for powering the meter. Uh, that one is actually still active, it was the one that came in the camera uh, whenever I bought it. But uh, I have another uh, Olympus OM1 then and what I did was I sent it away to uh, be serviced uh, by a company in the UK called uh, Luton Camera. Uh, I have to say that I'm in no way associated with that company. But what they did was they serviced this camera. And uh, what they did when they serviced it, they, they replaced the light seals in the back of it, which had deteriorated. Uh, they checked the shutter speeds uh, to make sure they were accurate. Uh, they gave the camera a clean. And uh, more importantly, what they did was they replaced the uh, battery uh, by using an adapter uh, type uh, uh, adapter in the uh, battery chamber so that the camera could now use a 1.5 volt silver oxide SR44 battery. Now that required that the camera's uh, light meter also had to be recalibrated and again Luton Camera did a magnificent job in uh, recalibrating to the light meter to work with that 1.5 volt silver oxide battery. Uh, as I say uh, if they hadn't uh, recalibrated the light meter, the voltage would have given an incorrect reading uh, had they just used a, a 1.5 volt battery on uh, the uh, meter. So not only did they clean uh, their camera, uh, check the shutter speeds, replace the light seals and uh, they re recalibrated and changed the meter in the camera to a 1.5 volt uh, silver oxide battery operation which basically gave this camera a brand new lease of life because now the camera light meter could operate once again with the standard uh, uh, silver oxide uh, SR44 battery which are very common uh, no problem getting them anymore and uh, the camera is fully functional with its light meter operating Whereas this camera, which hasn't had the conversion, 
still uh, uses the old uh, mercury cell which you can't get anymore and so the light meter in this camera once that battery goes done uh, the light meter will be pretty much redundant again another problem if you're buying an OM1 is to actually open up the back and uh, check the condition of the light seals uh, this one here uh, whenever I open up the back you can see the light seals have uh, completely deteriorated in this camera they turned into a sort of gooey uh, rubbery mess and uh, I couldn't guarantee that the uh, camera wouldn't let in light because the seals have completely deteriorated in this camera uh, which is not surprising when you consider that the OM-1N was launched in uh, uh, was launched in 1979, so it's quite an old camera. This one uh, badly needs uh, sent off to a Luton Camera or a, a similar company to be refurbished and have the uh, battery uh, upgrade changed from uh, the mercury cell to silver oxide have the light meter recalibrated and uh, the light seals uh, replaced uh, in the back of it quite a common problem with the OM1N if you're thinking of purchasing one uh, nowadays uh, it's worth bearing that in mind that uh, the light seals would probably have deteriorated if they haven't been replaced and the other problem is the light meter in the camera well, if it's still using the old mercury type battery, uh, it will be redundant because you can no longer purchase uh, 1.35 uh, mercury cells. Uh, they've been uh, uh, deemed environmentally unfriendly and so you can no longer get them. So uh, worth uh, bearing that in mind. As I say, one, one of these cameras has been upgraded. This one, uh, the other one hasn't. I'll still, uh, still have to send that one away, even though one, cosmetically it uh, looks like uh, still a, a beautiful camera. But uh, uh, save for the actual workings of the camera, uh, it needs a lot of work done to it. Another point to note is that with the original camera, the Olympus uh, OM-1 also had a problem with uh, the pentaprism. There was a type of uh, sealant in it which tended to deteriorate and leak uh, given time and uh, if you look through the viewfinder in a lot of OM1s you will see there's, there's like a gunge which appears in, in the bottom of the viewfinder where this uh, substance has deteriorated over time and it tends to accumulate uh, around the bottom edge of the viewfinder. It doesn't actually affect the workings of the camera as such but uh, it does uh, uh, take away from uh, the viewing and the viewfinder of the OM-1 which uh, generally speaking has a superb viewfinder, very bright uh, and uh, easily to focus. The viewfinders in the OM-1 are actually uh, the, they're interchangeable. You can you can take the uh, lens off, and uh, you can remove the standard viewfinder, and replace it with one with a, a grid marked on it or whatever. Uh, you can get different viewfinders for them. But the problem is not with the viewfinder in the camera. As I say, the problem emanates from uh, the prism in the camera, where the substance which Olympus uh, usually uh, used in the pentaprism deteriorates over time it sort of melts and it comes down and uh, creates a sort of a, a sludgy looking uh, gluey type thing on on the viewfinder so this OM-1 actually has that in uh, the viewfinder uh, it doesn't obstruct the viewfinder uh, totally but uh, you can actually see it in the bottom of the viewfinder so another point to rem to bear in mind uh, if you're buying an Olympus OM-1 I would recommend that you go for the later uh, OM-1N model because it will be newer and it uh, probably won't have the uh, deterioration problem in the pentaprism that the original OM-1 has 
So uh, worth noting that, uh, just uh, as a point of interest. But the OM-1, as I say, launched in uh, the, the, the M-1, the OM-1 launched in uh, 1972. Beautiful uh, clockwork, mechanical shuttered camera. Um, very, very reliable. As I say, uh, I'll, even though the meter, if it doesn't work in the camera, it's not a disaster because uh, the camera still operates perfectly uh, in, uh, in its uh, manual exposure mode because uh, the, the shutter and uh, the aperture will still uh, work perfectly. Uh, it's just that uh, you won't have a meter and you can still use a, a handheld meter or some other form of metering. You can uh, use the uh, the metering on the, the film box. It gives you guidelines as to uh, what uh, aperture and shutter speed to, to set uh, dependent on the lighting conditions on the film box sometimes. So uh, not a disaster if the meter isn't working on an OM-1 because the camera is completely mechanical. The shutter uh, will still function perfectly despite the fact that the, the meter is not working. So a uh, really nice camera, the OM-1. The original uh, originator of the OM series of cameras, the Olympus OM-1. And uh, I, I can uh, recommend it. Uh, I would also recommend, as I say, that uh, you get it uh, serviced and if you have a, a later OM1N model, uh, although it's not probably uh, the cheapest option in the world, but uh, if you want the camera to be fully functional and operational, then send it away. Uh, get your light seals uh, serviced, get the shutter speeds checked and uh, have the conversion uh, for the light meter done from uh, 1.35 mercury cell to uh, a 1.5 volt uh, silver oxide cell and you'll have a camera that will last you uh, an absolute lifetime of uh, shooting 35 millimeter film. So anyway that's uh, uh, my uh, last review on the Olympus OM series of cameras. I've actually run out of uh, uh, Olympus OM 35 millimeter cameras that I own. I'll probably move on to do some reviews on uh, different cameras. I have various uh, Canon autofocus cameras that I'd like to do some reviews on. But I hope you've enjoyed uh, uh, my reviews of the Olympus uh, 35 millimeter SLR camera system. A great camera system which uh, sadly now, of course, is uh, defunct, uh, but still very usable nowadays if you're interested in shooting film. The Olympus uh, OM system is a beautiful system. The cameras are beautiful. Uh, they uh, still uh, operate uh, very, very uh, functional even, even to this day. So if you're thinking of taking up photography, and uh, you want to have complete control over your exposure and uh, you don't mind that uh, it's slightly slow using a, a manual uh, all manual uh, exposure control camera as opposed to an automated uh, aperture priority or program or whatever type camera then uh, the Olympus OM-1 is certainly a beautifully crafted camera uh, uh, and uh, well worth considering in uh, your list of uh, cameras to uh, uh, purchase. So I hope you've enjoyed, uh, say, the 35mm uh, uh, Olympus uh, SLR series of reviews that I've done. Uh, please uh, feel free to leave any comments in uh, uh, the criticisms or whatever uh, you feel uh, and uh, subscribe to, to my channel because I have a few other reviews there of uh, various other Olympus OM uh, series cameras including the OM-10, the OM-2 spot program, the OM-2 and the OM-4 Ti if you're interested in uh, uh, listening to my review on any of those cameras. 
So I hope you've enjoyed uh, my review of uh, the last and probably the greatest of the uh, Olympus OM 35mm SLRs, the Olympus OM-1 and its later derivative, the Olympus OM-1N. So I uh, hope you enjoyed them and uh, see you again with probably a different make of camera the next time. But I uh, hope you enjoyed the Olympus reviews. Uh, bye for now.